What's going on guys, my name is Tom from Dreadlabs and today we're going to do racing graphics. Dreadlabs. A while ago I had some clients who wanted me to do some racing graphics for their merchandise because it was like this trend uh, in fashion. Uh, I guess sometimes it still is but uh, you might have seen them around like these uh, motocross jerseys uh, anyway. So uh, I have this uh, inspiration board on Pinterest which consists of some racing jerseys but mostly uh, some racing graphics. Uh, you've seen these probably on cars or on the clothing. Basically, they're full of sponsors, full of logos. Uh, and yeah, it's just really cool to look at. And as you can see, let me zoom in here. Uh, there's a lot to, there's basically like a lot to do with them. Uh, so I thought, let's just make a video on making some racing graphics. So yeah, let's do it. So one of the first uh, most important things of racing graphics, I think, is... Most of the graphics are extended, quite low, and most of the time also sheer slash slanted, I guess. Uh, let me show you what I mean. So these fonts might not look, well, cool at the moment, but basically if you look at these, uh, they kind of fit in with like this mood board, as you can see. Most of the logos and most of the graphics are quite wide and not like uh, squared, I guess. Anyway, uh, let me just uh, come up with some cooler graphics. So what I want to do is I want to go and create some outlines of these fonts. And what you see a lot in these graphics is uh, a lot of outlines. So what I want to do is I'm going to press Command 8 or Control 8 uh, to turn this into a compound path. This basically makes this into one group, which makes it easier to uh, create some outlines, which I'm going to do by going to Object, Path, Offset Path. Uh, I have a shortcut with Command 5, so I'm going to use it from now on. And just clicking 10 pixels for now is good. Let's just open my layer menu here. Um, so the inner one, uh, let's just make it red. And let's just do another one. So we're going to grab the black outline here. And we're going to do the same thing. So I'm going to press Command 5, which is Offset Path. And I'm going to click OK. And let's just do this one more time. And now I'm going to grab the middle one and make it white. And as you can see, this already starts looking like some kind of racing logo, graphic, whatever. So, for this one, uh, I have already outlined this as well. So let's go to Transform, Shear, and Shear it forward. Maybe like 35% or 35 degrees. Uh, and I'm going to make this into Compact Path as well, which we're going to do by pressing Command 8, fill it in. Pressing Command 5 or Control 5 to make an offset path again. And now we're grabbing the middle one. And let's just make a gradient out of this one. So let's just turn this 90 degrees. And make this one, I think, something like red. And then drag this one in and create a white line here. Let's see what that looks like. Now let's just make it gray in the middle. So it won't clash with the outline black. Um, yeah, so in a fairly quick way, we already created three or two graphics, uh, racing style, I guess. So let just uh, let me just show you some other tricks that you can do uh, while creating these. So let me search another uh, extended font like Helvetica. Okay, these are outlined now. And what I want to do is I'm going to move the L ever so slightly to the right, so there's a bit more space between them. And now I'm going to go and grab my polygon tool clicking once making sure that I have three sides so I'm making a triangle basically and then I'm going to turn this 19 degrees 90 degrees sorry and by scaling it down a bit and just making sure that it aligns with the top here like this and now I'm going to hold alder option and drag this down and pressing command D a few times so let's just say this and now we're going to go and scale these so they will fit. And scale these ones just a little bit like this. And now we're going to group these and also drag them to here while holding all their option. And now we've du duplicated them and now we both have these like speedy letters, I guess. And let's just unite them. And shear them as well. And let's just make these ones... Give them 
another gradient but let's do it with a blue of some sorts this time gives a kind of me metallic look I guess and now we're gonna go offset path again making this white well a full one white and then another one and we'll make this one I guess the same color as this dark gray so if I click with my uh, color uh, eyedropper tool here uh, it will turn this into a gradient but if you want just want the color of this certain gradient just hold shift while clicking like this and now I'm gonna go into this group and make sure this is one to the back like this and I don't really like the outline so I'm gonna do it over again so um, make sure that these are so I added the mitre limit in here which makes these points uh, stand out a bit better uh, so I'm gonna go to the fill and make this white the same thing here make sure the miter limit is up because if it's down you'll get these like cracks that we just had before so like this and by holding shift uh, while clicking with our eyedropper tool you get this and then I'm gonna go into this group and push the L to the back like this and okay this is our third graphic so far so I've had another font um, which is uh, Adriana Extended, which is great outlines. Uh, by the way, guys, uh, these three fonts are all, uh, all findable on uh, Adobe Fonts. So if you have an Adobe subscription, uh, you can actually find these. Well, not for free because you're paying for your subscription, but yeah, they're on there. So another thing that you can do is you're going to go to the full height of this uh, letter, of the D, like this. And I'm going to go to Properties, which is under Window properties and clicking the anchor point here so turn goes to the bottom and with the height selected you're going to just press slash 2 which divides the height by 2 so now you have a uh, rectangle that's at 50% height of all these letters and I'm going to go and extend them like so and I'm going to give it a color, color maybe like a green you haven't really worked with green so far and I'm going to duplicate this, drag it up, and make this white. I'm going to hide them for a second, make sure that this, this is a compound path again. Now I'm going to go copy this and paste it in place. So well, now we have two uh, text uh, layers on top of each other. I'm going to go select the first text layer and the green uh, rectangle. And make sure that intersect is turned on, which gives it the bottom uh, part of the text here uh, you can recolor this I guess uh, and we're gonna go do the same for the other ones so now the full text is selected with the white rectangle I'm gonna go click and intersect and now we have this white let, let me just give it another color so basically you have two uh, uh, layers right now with uh, half of the text so what we're gonna do now is push this up, well not 10 pixels, maybe like 3 and now select them both uh, separately and click on command 8 so we're making it these into a compound path select them both and we're gonna go for the uh, offset path again and this doesn't really look that good so let's just redo it I think we need to have a thinner line, something like 3 pixels and what if we move this one like, like here and if we share it even more I don't really like the outlines for this so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete them and I'm gonna make a square around them so making sure that this is lines up together uh, so Okay, so this is kind of lining up uh, now. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and grab a rectangle. Make sure that it's behind what I wanted to uh, show. I'm going to group the text, uh, both like have text layers here. So I have one text layer. I'm going to select them both. And by clicking the background, like the back rectangle once, you make it a key object and you'll align this perfectly. 
So what I want to do now is I'm going to go grab my pen tool by pressing P on my keyboard. Click this, uh, click along the lines of this path until you see this uh, purple text called path. And if you don't see that, you go to view and click on smart guides. Make sure this is turned on. And I'm going to click here and then I'm going to click here. So what I have now is, let me just make a stroke out of it. You see there, there's a path uh, going along the lines of these uh, D. So what I want to do is I'm going to drag this up and make sure that line extension over there is turned on. So if you move this to the right, you can see that the line extension is turning off. Make sure that this is turned on. So it will line up perfectly with the, with the slant of the text, I guess. Like this. And we're going to do it now until we've reached the top of this rectangle. Like so. And like so. Now we're going to grab this line and we're going to push it 10 pixels, well, 20 pixels to uh, the left. Going to press Command C and Control uh, Command F, which makes a copy. We just move this all the way to the right and make sure that it's aligned like this. So, what I want to do now is I'm going to select these and give them another color, maybe red, so we can see them a bit better. And now I want to connect these. So Essentially we're making a rectangle with the same uh, slant angle as our text. And now I'm going to make sure that they're intersect, uh, intersecting the black uh, rectangle and the red outline rectangle. And if we're filling this with black again, and turning to the back. And now you can see that we achieved a, a rectangle with a slant in the same uh, angle as our text. And to make this a bit smoother, I'm going to go and select my direct section tool and give it corners of 20 pixels. Like this. So let's just do one more and then we'll call for the day. So for the last one I'm going to use Connor Black Italic and we're going to type racing. Go. Scale it down and I'm going to go DL and we're going to use sneakers script ultra wide. And let's uh see what we can do with this. So if we outline this, create a rectangle with the same height as this line of the L. And using the same technique which we did before is we're going to make a path along the lines of this slant L. And we're going to make sure that this line is lining up with this. sure that it follows through here and extend this line and we're going to use it and for this one I'm going to do the same thing so create outlines we have a line here Make sure that it aligns with the top of the R. So what I want to do here is I have this first line now here. Uh, here. I'm going to uh, make a copy of it and let it follow through until the bottom of here of this rectangle. Like this. And then clicking on the one below here. So while holding other option, make sure that these align like this. And now we're deleting the middle one. And now we have two lines in equal height, which basically connect to each other. So what I want to do is I'm going to go to the center of this rectangle and draw out a arrow, an arrow 
like so. Let's just extend this one all the way to here. And now we can uh, unite this as one path. And duplicate this one all the way to here. Uh, make it a bit thinner, like this. It's like these two upper anchor, uh, points, join them. Do the same for this one. And with our shape builder tool, we remove the excess parts while holding other option. And now we have this wacky figure, I guess. Let's just unite it all, scale it down a bit. And then we'll probably like make an ellipse around it, like so. Turn the stroke up. Then with offset path, we'll make a smaller circle in the middle here. We'll rescale the graphic ever so slightly, like this. And then we'll turn the fill, let's say, blue. This white. And this one white as well. Oops. Like so. And then we're going to outline the strokes. So we can send this to like someone who wants to collaborate or something. So we're going to go to select this option here. So go to object, path, outline stroke. And I also have a shortcut, command one. And let's see. All right, so now we have some shapes. DL Racing Co. Um, so now we have five racing graphics. So uh, if you want me to do more racing graphics, please let me know in the comments because I have a couple of ideas for other ones. Yeah, and if you have any suggestions for a new video, please let me know in the comments as well. Uh, or you can join us in Discord. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.